Hey there, my name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works. And uh, what we do is everything from uh, on-demand learning, virtual mentoring, hackathons, private trainings, boot camps. Uh, and for this video, what I wanted to do is bring you another monthly digest for the Power BI desktop application. So it is now July and Power BI has put out its update and there are quite a new features that we want to cover with you. And in all of these videos, we like to highlight some of those features that we think are going to be the most user accessible for people to start putting into their Power BI reports. So I hope you find something um, that you can use within this update. And without any further ado, let's talk about the first one. The first one is the Power Automate Visual. Now, back in April of this year, a new visual was put out into uh, the custom visuals out at App Source, And you could bring in this Power Automate Visual, and it was in preview, and you could use it in your reports. However, now with this month, it is just embedded right into your visualizations pane. So if you watch the one in April, uh, I did a little demonstration on what the Power Automate visual does. I'm gonna do the same thing here, but I'm gonna approach it in a different way. I wanna show you another kind of automate that we could use. Now, the, one of the main goals of this, at least that I, that I think, is the Automate visual is gonna allow you to capture data from a report page and then do something with that outside of the Power BI report. So let's say you're looking at a report page, you've got some great data insights and you want to share that with somebody else. Well, you don't wanna simply just take a screenshot of it, send it in an email or call your buddy over from the office and say, hey, look what I was finding here. We need to take a look into this. Instead, let's automate the process and maybe, for example, like we're gonna do, send a Teams message with all those data insights that we're currently looking at. So let's see how we can get this set up. So we're gonna come right on over into our Power BI report. And you can see we're in our July 2021 update. And I'm gonna come over to a page I created just for this. And the first thing is we need to add in that Power Automate visual. And that Power Automate visual is gonna be located over here in your visualizations pane. And it's got the beautiful Automate icon. So once I click on it, it's gonna put it onto the report page. And there's gonna be directions of how to get this set up. Now I prefer to go into focus mode. So I can see all those directions right away without having to scroll down. And the first thing that we have to do is we have to add data. The only way to get this started is there's gonna to have to be some kind of data capture. Now, whatever fields you bring into this visualization, you can either choose to send them in the automate or not. So whatever you put here, you'd have to have at least one data field to start setting up an automate, but then you can choose what fields you want to use within the automate itself. So what I'm going to do for this one is I wanna report on that sales territory country. That's what I'm gonna to wanna to be sending to my Teams person, as well as that total sales number. And so once I have that in, again, nothing has really taken into effect yet. But now what I'm allowed to do is edit the automate. Now it's ready for me to put some procedures in of what do I wanna do with this data. And the way that we're gonna accomplish that is we're gonna come up into the ellipses and we're gonna hit edit. And once we go into editing of it, it looks fairly similar to what you would see at flow.com. And we could come up to the top and start off with a brand new automate, or we could start using four currently templates. And I think these are gonna to continue to get added more and more throughout time. But the one that I like and the one I wanna to showcase today is the send a Teams message from Power BI. So once you, if you select that, you're gonna to have to sign in with your account. And then afterwards, you'll hit continue. And now we start to set it up. And so what I'm going to do here is after I click the button, I want to send a message to one of my trainers. So I'm going to send it on over to Jonathan. And let me make sure I spelled his name right. There he is, Jonathan. And now I'm going to give him the message. And so the message I'm first going to start off with is just a hard coded look at what I found. And then I'm going to come on down. I'm going to say, let me show him that sales territory country that I found some insights about. And now as you take a look underneath, these are all parameters that we can use within the Automate. And so some of them are just already pre-created for us, like our username, timestamps, et cetera, as well as any data fields that we brought into that visualization. So if we come over here, there's our sales territory country. So I'm gonna select it. And now it automatically does the coding for us in the background. It puts an apply to each on here, which is picture perfect. But to continue to add more to this, I'm gonna to have to select it again and just add some more fields. So I'm gonna put a few more things in here. I'm gonna tell them what the total sales were. 
So total sales, I'll come over and find our Power BI total sales. There it is. And then I'll add one last little piece to the message. I said, I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to put my name in here. So that way he knows who this, uh, who found the insight. So username, which will be Matt Peterson, uh, found this insight at, and I'll put in our timestamp. Once I have that set up, again, it is a template, so we could add more actions to this afterwards. Uh, I'm going to keep it simple for today. I'm going to put a headline here, though. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, Data Insights. And then I'm just going to hit Save. Now, when I hit save, one of the things to know is the automate's not ready to go yet. All you've simply done is set up an automate, but we have to basically like publish this or apply this automate to our button. And so I could hit save and apply, but just in case you forget to do that, a troubleshooting technique I think that might happen to some people is you hit save, you go back to your report, you try to go, you go, whoa, what's going on here? It's still telling me there's some directions here. Well, it's that last step. We've got to we've got to put this into place. So I'm going to come right back on here and we're going to go back into edit. And now once we come in, I'm going to select that automate that I've set up and send a team's message from Power BI. And then I'm going to hit apply. And I could have done it on the other screen there. You might have seen a check mark. That would have been the same idea. But now I'll hit apply. Things look good. Now when I go back to my report, now I've got the capability. So let's say I select Germany, I see the total sales, I wanna share that with Jonathan, I simply click on my button. But remember, when you're in the desktop application, if you're newer to Power BI, when you have a button, you can't just click on it because when you click on it, it thinks you're still trying to do some kind of design or, or modify it. To use it, you have to hold down the control key. So I'm gonna hit control key, run the flow, it's being triggered, and now we just wait for the results to come through. Now, I could easily just go over to Jonathan's office and say, hey, did you get that Teams message? Let me see what it looks like. But maybe you don't have that capability at the moment in time. You can still go and look at your run history to see if it executed properly. And the way that you get to the run history is you go back into the editing of your visualization. And you're going to select the automate that you were concerned about, which was my send a Teams message. And then down at the bottom, the 28 day run history, it succeeded. Great, but let's get some more details about it. So when I click on it, we'll come on down. Flow ran successfully, that's always good news. If I go to the apply to each and go into that action, the recipients was Jonathan, great. Here's the message that he was sent. Germany, there is that number. Uh, Matt Peterson found this insight and there is our timestamp. So as we can see, we have a Power Automate visual and that's just one of the templates, but Feel free, obviously, to browse around, see what else you can do with it. I'm sure a lot of people are going to come up with some really unique ideas of how to use uh, the automate visualization. So apart from the Power Automate visual, there were some other updates in the July, quite a few more. Uh, and one of those updates uh, concerns security. So if you use any Microsoft Information Protection Sensitivity Labels or MIP Labels uh, for short there, uh, now they are generally available in the Power BI desktop. They used to be in preview, but now July, generally available. And they've added two new updates to it. One of those being is if you decide to republish a Power BI report uh, and it has sensitivity labels, and you already have the report out there with sensitivity labels, you have the option to either override the sensitivity labels if they've changed or to not override them. So just one extra little option you can choose from when republishing your reports out. The other thing comes from the inheriting of sensitivity labels. A lot of times that common data source people use in Power BI are Excel files. And on those Excel files, there might already be some predefined sensitivity labels. Well, now when you bring that workbook in, those labels are automatically inherited into the Power BI report. And so that's going to apply to your data set as well as to the report whenever you do publish this out uh, into the service. So again, another little update to there. Apart from that, uh, in terms of direct query for Azure Analysis Services and our Power BI data sets, they've been doing a lot with this over the last few months. They've done two more updates to the way that we connect to it. Uh, and what is coming from this is more concerned with the local model. So if the remote model that you've connected to, 
if you have date tables or any kind of auto-generated date tables, those are now going to show up within your local model. Apart from that, the other thing that they've updated is if your if you have any lineage tags defined in that remote model, they will also come right on over and show up in your local model as well. So those are the two updates that they have added to it. The last update, not last update, but the last thing that um, we're going to talk about before we get into another uh, visualization part of Power BI uh, is the fact of the model view. So throughout the last few months, they've been updating the model view within the Power BI desktop. So they've updated the icons, they've updated the way the model view looks within the desktop. And before today, you always had to turn that on as a preview feature. And then Power BI would ask you, do you want to use the updated model view? Well, as of right now, that is no longer inherent. So whenever you open up any report, whether you're building a new one or an old one, it automatically puts the new updated model view. And in the updated model view, some of the things that we see is we have some new icons. The fonts have changed a little bit. I think they look a little bit crisper. If we hover over the different table names, it gives us the name of the table, what kind of storage mode we're in, import, direct query, or dual. Uh, and the last time the data was refreshed, as well as the colors will change at the top depending upon what mode you are in. And you can modify all of these properties of your cards over in your properties panel. So if you haven't seen the updated model view before, definitely take a look at it because it's now just part of your reports. Play around with it and see what you like. Now, after the model view update, they also have put in this update a new way to write DAX when it comes to referencing dates and times. So in your DAX formulas, if you're ever referencing dates or times, oftentimes you would have to use the date function or the time function uh, to return what you needed. Well, they just made it a little bit easier for us, and you might find a good use case for this, or you might just like the old way of doing date function and time function, but I think this looks just a little bit cleaner. So let me show you how we can get this done. So in my current report, I have one card visual that has my total sales for the entire data set. But what if I wanted the sales just after December 1st, 2006? And I wanted to always display that no matter what filters were on the page or in my filters panel. Well, I could use a DAX formula to do that using a calculate statement. And this is the old way of how we would have to do it. So let me bring this up. So the sales after December 6th, this is the old way. So I would just simply put in a calculate statement and I would say I want to, I need to make this a little bit larger, calculate my sales, but I want only the order date column to return the rows that have a date after December 1st of 2006 by using that date function. Well, now there's a new way to do it. So I'm gonna come over here and show it to you. So this is the, the giving me the exact same answer, just a new way to code it. Instead of using the date function, I can start off with DT. And then after DT, I put in double quotes, the year, the month, and the day value. And it looks like it's not working, right? Or we all know that when we see red with DAX formulas, something has gone wrong. Uh, it is working correctly. Uh, the red lines are, are showing up there. Uh, but it's not messing up the execution. So I don't know in the future if they're going to uh, to fix that so that we don't see the red lines, but things are great. We get the exact same answer without using the date function. Now you might say, well, Matt, that date function is not that terrible to do. I don't know if this is useful to me. It might not be. But if you're doing dates as well as times, well, now you're using two functions, a date function added on with your time function. So what we can do with this is not just return a date using this formula or this syntax, we can return times as well. And so if you take a look down here, if I wanted to return 4.30 uh, in the morning, 28 seconds, I could just simply put a space in and then put in my timestamp. So my column is just a date column. I don't have a date time column in here. Uh, so this is how we could do it. You also might notice that if you ever look at anyone else's who's using this, the other way to put this in is instead of putting a space there, you can also put a capital T. So the capital T is not required, uh, but it is something that you can use. Uh, I prefer not to have it there. I think it looks cleaner this way. Uh, something to know is that when you are using this, um, apologies, when you're, when you're using this, again, you're gonna see those red marks 
but things are going to get executed picture perfect. So apart from the DAX, our Power Automate visual, the model view updates, some direct queries, some sensitivity levels, you all know that with every single Power BI update, not every single one, but with most of them, there are new data connections that are available to us. And so in this month's update, there is one new connector along with some updated connectors as well. And so our new data connection is the Amazon Athena. So if you're using Amazon Athena as your data source, now you can bring it in, bring that data into your Power BI desktop. Uh, as well as the updated connectors are uh, Databricks, Dremio, and MariaDB. So there's a few bugs that they fixed and some extra functionality. So they put that in this month's update. So hopefully you've enjoyed, you found some things that you can use in your current reports or ones that you are going to build out. Um, like, subscribe, comment below, let us know what you enjoyed the most about it. And uh, with that being said, I hope to see you in next month's update for August. I hear there's uh, some pretty cool features that are gonna be coming out. Uh, and I hope to give you some great information about it.